and gentlemen, good day and welcome back. My name is Jeff Nolan from Parade Restaurant on the sixth floor of the Happy Valley Clubhouse. Today we're going to produce for you a rather elegant dish that I think you can prepare at home with no issue. Today is a chicken ballantine stuffed with pistachio and bacon. Join me, let's get started. In front of us today we have a range of ingredients that are going to prepare this elegant chicken ballantine. Now what is a ballantine? Essentially a ballantine is a roll of a piece of leg meat in this case. We're going to be using chicken legs. Uh, I have an organic free range chicken leg. The bone is currently still inside but I'm going to teach you how to take the bone out and actually fill it with a very savory stuffing of bacon, minced chicken, a little bit of pistachio and some aromatic herbs. So let's get started. Today, uh, first things first is we want to work on our filling. Now this ballantine must have a filling that is both moist, uh, sumptuous and very well seasoned. So to start with that, I want to take some garlic and shallot and just simply give these a rough chop and we're going to cook them very slowly in a little bit of butter. Now what this will do is it will bring out the flavors of the garlic and shallot and uh, allow this to soak into our filling later which is going to be the basis of uh, our ballantine. Now this filling could be using many different types of ingredients. I'm going to work on a very classic base of shallots and garlic today but if you wanted to add uh, anything else, your favorite herb, you could absolutely do so. And in a moment I'm going to show you how to add as much flavor as possible into this roll so that you can use this great dish as your next main course. Okay? So I have garlic shallot here. I'm going to start with a little bit of butter. Uh, the butter here will also help add some richness and fat to our filling. But we're going to add that to a medium hot pan. And when that comes to temperature we simply add our shallots and garlic in ensuring that we cook these at a medium heat until they are a little bit soft, aromatic and translucent. We don't want to add too much color here. Uh, for a chicken uh, stuffing that we're going to produce today, we try to remain as much of a, a white color on the inside of that mousse to really show the technique and some of the professional flair that you're going to take from this recipe today. So adding uh, a low heat or medium heat will provide the ability to cook it without browning it, which is what we're going for. So let's let that heat up. In the meantime, what else do we have here? Well, I have some pistachio nuts. These are great organic pistachios, very green. They go in as well to cook with our mixture of shallots and garlic. We have a range of uh, different herbs and different aromatics on the table here. We're going to prepare some of these while our pan heats up. I have everything from fresh basil, uh, thyme, oregano, um, even some uh, kale that you could add inside if you wanted as well. If you have fresh sage leaves, it would be a great match also. Uh, you can try as well to use fresh thyme. Just pick all the leaves off. Uh, all of our herbs today that we're featuring came from our aeroponic garden on the 6 4 patio. So although your recipe calls for sage, uh, today I'm substituting for what was best in the season for me. I think when people start to work with sage, they become familiar with this idea of Christmas flavor. Sage is very often used at Christmas in your turkey, but it is a great hearty herb that is fantastically suited for any winter or autumn dish. And of course, if you prefer this kind of robust herb flavor, you can use it during the summer as well. Not a problem. Okay, so we got a little bit of heat going here. <clears throat> Onions, garlic, sauteing away. We're going to add a little bit of black pepper, white pepper, any mix that you like. Nice touch of salt. And what we're doing here is we're slowly drying out the flavors of what will be a base uh, seasoning mix for our chicken mousse. Okay. Now this term ballantine is a rather classic term that we use in professional kitchens. Again, it's simply a roll of meat. Usually it has a bit of skin on the outside. Uh, and then the meat is stuffed with everything from a fruit filling. You could use dried apricots, dried dates. But really the focus is to get a pairing of flavors that works well for the meat choice that you've done. So today is chicken, so shallots, garlic, pistachio. Fantastic mix in my opinion. Um, now again, you could add some dry fruits in here if you wanted, maybe in the autumn season would be appropriate. The whole point is just make sure that you saute everything beforehand to get all the aromatics coming out. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and add, I have fresh sage here that I've already chopped, as well as a little bit of the kale that I mentioned that came from our aeroponic garden on the sixth floor. This garden um, provides a lot of fresh aromatics and herbs for us to use, so I'm going to use them today. Just added my basil as well. We'll give this a quick stir 
the flavors, the aromas in the room right now are quite pungent. Uh, and this is a flavor path base that will help season our chicken mousse later on, okay? So at this point, we've sauteed. They're nice and lightly translucent, quite aromatic, and we're gonna stop the cooking process there because we don't want to take it so far that uh, it starts to deteriorate or come apart. You don't want to lose all the green <coughs> inside of these herbs. Because in a moment, we're going to let this cool and then add this to our chicken mousse base that I'll teach you in a moment. And uh, this will actually go through another cooking process later as a finished product. Stay with me. Let's cool this down and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so our stuffy mix is starting to cool in the fridge. In the meantime, let's work together to debone this chicken. Now, I started with uh, chicken legs for a moment. If you want to at home, buy some latex gloves. You can wear those as well. The importance here is hygiene. When working with raw chicken, of course, you want to have a change of cutting boards after you're done your butchery. So I do have a change for us in a moment. Uh, you also want to make sure you have uh, clean hands, clean work surface. You don't want to have any contact issues with uh, salmonella, for example, in your chicken. So do take care. I have a very sharp knife, not terribly large, uh, a knife that fits comfortably in my hand and allows me some maneuverability or flexibility so that I can debone this chicken, okay? So I have a chicken leg. Uh, at this point, I would turn the skin to the bottom and start to search for two points. The first point would be this knuckle joint that attached to the chicken itself. And the second point would be where the thigh meets the drumstick. And you'll find another knuckle in there. All you want to do is simply make one incision along that bone. And you're going to find that the chicken will pull off the bone, revealing the meat inside. Now, you don't want to go so deep that you end up cutting through to the bottom of our chicken leg. Again, our Ballantine requires a beautiful uniform piece of meat, preferably with skin on the bottom, that will allow us to roll our stuffing into in a moment. Okay, so take extra care. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. You need a really sharp tip on your knife. And just let the meat slowly come off the bone by itself. It is a quite a natural process. Taking care not to cut through that skin, okay? So we've exposed the thigh bone and the drumstick bone. From here, simply place your knife underneath, making nice little incisions until the leg comes out. Again, you can do a little bit of pulling. At this point, your main focus is not to penetrate the skin below, okay? We can go back later and take off any cartilage or small pieces of bone that may have attached itself to the meat. But our priority right now is just maintain the integrity of that skin. Okay. Now, could you buy pre-boned or deboned legs from the supermarket? You could. The only downfall is you're going to have less control over the shaping of your Valentine because usually at the supermarkets, these have been mechanically separated and you're not going to have as much uniformity to the shape. So from here, we have the leg already taken out. We have a deboned piece of meat. And we also have the skin completely intact, okay? This bone, keep this bone, use it for a stock, a sauce. Do not discard them. If you don't need it at the moment, by all means, freeze them down. It makes a great soup. What you need to do next on the meat side is just inspect for any pieces of cartilage or small bones that may have come. If you find some, just simply remove them with a nice slice of the knife, ensuring that you have uh, uniformity. So on this chicken leg, I see that I have a little area where there's no meat. This is simply where the knuckle joint was. So what I'll do is I'll actually make a small incision inside our chicken leg and somewhat butterfly it, okay? Open it up and just simply let that fold into place so that we have some uniform meat throughout, okay? So now we have somewhat even coverage over the whole chicken leg and that's what we're looking for, okay? If you have any sinews or any of these connective tissues at the end, Please take time to remove these. They are rather chewy and they won't cook down uh, into a soft texture later. So take a moment now, it'll make all the difference later. This can be done with a duck leg, it can be done with a turkey leg. Uh, really, any game meat, um, you can make a great balancing from using the legs. You can also use the breast, but you run the choice of uh, having a little bit of a, a drier meat. So you have to perfect your cooking technique first. Okay, from here, Nice uniformity, I have the skin still intact. What we'll do is we'll keep this and reserve it in the refrigerator until later. Right now, let's move ahead and finish our stuffing for this great Valentine. All right, next up, I've changed my cutting board. We have a brand new cutting board here. What we want to do next is start with 
a large bowl. I've had this bowl in the freezer for as long as I could just to get a nice cold temperature to it. When we work with raw meats, especially ground meats, you want to take extra precaution to ensure that your hygiene in the kitchen is optimum. Uh, bacteria can grow quite quickly, so you want to maintain a nice cold temperature while working. Now, you can also put another bowl of ice underneath. Just depends how long you're going to be doing the process, okay? So here I have a mixture of two things. Your recipe card today calls for chopped raw bacon. I've gone one step further and simply added uh, raw bacon and chicken legs to a grinder to create this paste. This is simply ground chicken with bacon already inside. So you can see we have a wonderful marbling that's going to really add a juiciness and a little bit of resistance uh, texture to your tooth when you bite through it. So quite pleasant. Uh, we're adding in our pistachio and our shallot mixture here. Again, this has been cooled down. You want to make sure everything is at the same temperature. Because in a moment, what we're going to do is actually uh, fold cream into this to create a little bit more uh, texture to the dish, uh, which will add kind of a, a soft creaminess to it. And this is uh, imperative that all of your ingredients are the same temperature, which is ice cold, to allow the cream to incorporate and emulsify uh, as easy as possible. Okay, a little bit of white and black pepper again. Again, go with as much or as little as you like. Want to add some salt. Salt, of course, is going to help season, but it's also going to help emulsify the cream into your meat as well and hold that suspension. Now, do take care of the bacon is quite salty. You want to make sure that you have a nice balance that we're not getting ahead of ourselves with the seasoning too much, okay? So from here, we simply work that in first. Now, inside this mix, you could add everything from uh, you some kidneys, you could add gizzards, uh, chicken hearts. Uh, I would just say pre-sear the kidneys or chicken hearts in a pan, a little bit of salt, cool them down, and then chop them up into a rough texture. You could add also, uh, quite nice would be dried apricots, uh, dried prunes again. Do a little dice, just about the same size as the pistachios, and add them in here. Okay, so we have our paste. Next step, we're going to add just a touch of cream, little by little. Again, my cream is ice cold, my bowl is ice cold. We're working at the same temperatures here, and we're going to ensure that everything emulsifies before I add in more cream. Now by emulsify, what I mean is we're going to add that cream until the meat itself starts to take it in, starts to lighten in texture, but at no point should you see any small particles of uh, you know, cream or butter coming out. If you over mix this, you will find that the cream could curdle, so try to work in a folding action. Don't mix it too aggressively, and the longer you keep it on the ice, the better your results will be. So again, that marbling with the bacon is going to add quite a nice texture to this uh, dish, and the cream is going to add a nice softness. Now because we have a chicken leg to start with, there's no need to add eggs here at this point. If you're doing maybe a large turkey leg where you're going to have a very thick mousse inside of your uh, valentine, I would add a little bit of egg white. It'll give you some structure after it cooks so it's easier to slice. But in this case, we're working with a small chicken leg, so I'm quite confident that we can maintain the integrity of our stuffing, and allow it to slice nicely for your guests as well. Okay, so that is about all the cream I'm going to add today. You can see that our paste has turned into uh, kind of this soft, rich emulsification. We have nice big chunks of pistachio, we have our green herbs. Really, at this point, you need to think ahead. After I steam my chicken leg, which we'll do in a moment, and I roast it and I slice it for my guests, what do I want them to experience? Well, in this case, I want to slice through the chicken and show them a rustic texture on the inside. Whole nuts, uh, large pieces of herbs. If I had the kidneys or the dried fruits in there as well, you can imagine cutting through and seeing different textures inside your valentine. Okay? So think ahead and think about and consider what you want to offer your guests. Okay, so that is that. Let's move on to the next step, which is actually stuffing our leg. I'll show you an excellent rolling technique and then we're going to go ahead and show you how to cook it. Stay with me. Okay, so the exciting part, how do we roll a valentine? Well, I've readjusted my workstation here. What I have in front of me is a layer of plastic wrap. Now, plastic wrap is going to allow us to shape and form this valentine into the classic kind of round shape that you would associate. Consider us uh, as making almost like a sausage, but the outside of the sausage is the chicken leg, and inside is a little bit of mousse and our several garnishes that we've added. Now, this plastic wrap, you can use the one that you have at home. Take one piece on your table, take a second piece and slightly overlap it on top. 
If you find that the air conditioning or your fan in the kitchen is blowing the plastic wrap around, take a wet towel and simply wet the table down ever so lightly, and this will effectively stick the plastic wrap to your tabletop, allowing you to roll without issue. Okay? Now, take a chicken leg, look at your chicken leg, and ass assess which is the easiest part to roll first. So I see here that we have a nice straight edge. I have an empty spot here. So I want to say that if I want my roll to be as even as possible, I will start with the uglier side towards myself. And by ugly, I mean simply that we don't have a straight edge of skin. Because essentially after we roll this, it will roll together and finish with a beautiful seam on the bottom, which is much easier for us to sear later in our frying pan. Okay, so there we are. Very important now. Season your chicken. We've taken time to season the, the breast itself, pardon me, the, uh, the leg. We've taken time to season uh, our mousse. We've taken time to season our shallots. So take time now to season the meat. Consider the amount of meat that we're adding to this dish. You need more salt to get inside. Next, very simple. Take a little bit of your paste. Add it from end to end. Ensuring that it's as even as possible, okay? Try not to overstuff it. The point here is to have just enough mousse inside to accent the chicken leg itself. Uh, this is not about creating as much stuffing as possible in each item, okay? Simply so place a little bit inside there, and then from this point, start to eyeball, you know, how much space do you need to roll? Well, for me, I would say, let's pull this towards myself a bit. Grab the bottom of your plastic wrap, and working with your fingers, simply roll the chicken over the top, and apply a little bit of pressure below to bring the chicken down, creating a sausage, okay? Now, from here, you could reopen to reposition, but just see how convenient that was to kind of roll it like this, okay? Now, what I would say here, place your plastic over the top, okay? Roll it and allow the plastic to kind of squeeze to the outside, okay? From here, we have a basic shape. But the problem is, inside of our Ballantine, you're going to have some air pockets, some gaps where the mousse has it uh, connected with our chicken leg. So all you have to do, really, is just massage it slightly, three or four times. That will help press the mousse together. And then I want you to take one side of the Ballantine. Use your hand to just slightly press it, okay? You press and then you twist. Press and twist. Put it on the tabletop and just roll it towards you. And what that's going to do is at least secure one end of your chicken so that we can now finalize the shape of our valentine. There are many ways to tie the ends of your chicken roll. Uh, in the kitchen, I would simply tie this one into a knot and feed it to the sausage as close as possible to, to kind of set the shape. At home, simply take a little bit more plastic wrap or string if you have, take it on the end, and from here, just work to the edge of your chicken roll, okay? as close as you can get it. Okay, now from there, you just give it a nice tight knot and take a knife and just cut off the excess here as well as this excess as well, okay? So this is effectively giving us a starting point for our shape. Now the next point is, very carefully, you want to take a knife or a toothpick and you want to just take one or two holes inside your roll. This will allow for the air that might be trapped between the skin and your plastic to escape, allowing that shape to really come into, into uh, the position that you want it to be. So same thing, with the palm of your hand, press, roll towards you, and you're gonna get instantly a beautiful shape like this, okay? I can feel just a little bit more air inside, so I'll give it one more poke. I'm gonna press, roll, okay, and then again, secure it with your plastic wrap or your string, whichever you have at home. Now, if you have any pieces coming out of your Ballantine, as I have here, in a moment, we'll rewrap it one more time with plastic wrap. And this will give us uh, even uniformity as well as coverage so that when we go to poach it in the next step, uh, we won't have any flavor coming out. Now, if you want to be less use of plastic in your kitchen, what you could do is simply work with the leg on a simple fold, try to keep it as tight together, line them up in a roasting tray, and bake them like this. And at least the edge-to-edge -edge contact of your various chicken legs will hold them together. You won't get this uniform 
tube shape, but it's completely up to you. In this case, the plastic is not much to be used, and it would allow us to keep the integrity of our dish moving forward. Uh, so a rather crucial step, okay? So I'm gonna fold one more piece of plastic around, and we're gonna go straight into the bottle water. Stay with me. All right, next step, we take our Valentine, and we're gonna add it here to a pan of poaching water. This pan is just below the boiling point. This will allow for our chicken to slowly cook, uh, maintaining uh, the juiciness and the sumptuousness of our, our filling on the inside while still setting the actual shape. If you have a steamer at home, by all means, I welcome you to use your steamer. You want to steam it um, at about 75 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes or until you can insert a probe thermometer and it reads 75 degrees. It's very important to go up to this temperature to ensure that the, the chicken mousse is safe to eat. Uh, in this case, with the boiling, you have a little bit uh, less accuracy, but as long as you keep it below the boil at a poaching temperature, guaranteed you're going to be around 80, 85 degrees Celsius, and I would give it 15 to 20 minutes, and you'll be set to go. So let's let this cook, and uh, let's get started on our next component for the dish, which uh, in your recipe will call for uh, roast potatoes. But today on our aeroponic hunt on the sixth floor, I looked at these beautiful, beautiful baby carrots that we have. Just came in... Uh, out of the ground today and we have three colors we have a beautiful yellow an orange and a red what we're going to do today is simply work with the tops these tops not much use for us today so we'll dispose of those but these baby carrot uh, really have so much flavor uh, I recommend that if you can try to find some uh, local farms here in Hong Kong and try to source some great carrots from them um, carrots straight out of the ground within the first 24 hours have such a different flavor than the ones that you buy at a supermarket that maybe have been around for a while. Okay, so these carrots today, I'll simply cut them in half, revealing the interior. You can see these beautiful purple carrots have a gorgeous ivory interior. Relatively speaking, the flavors are somewhat the same on all carrots, although the darker colored ones tend to have a slightly more earthy aroma to them. Okay, so from here, these have been washed. Uh, I can add those straight into the poaching liquid as well and cook them together. Again, this chicken itself, um, no need to add any seasoning to the water. Now, in this case, the carrots may benefit from having some seasoning in the water. So what I would recommend is if you're going to cook together in the same pot, uh, don't add seasoning yet. Let's season later in the frying pan for those uh, baby carrots, okay? Now, the next part is we're going to do a little saute of some garlic and shallots for those baby carrots. And we're also going to pan roast our chicken leg inside the pan of a little bit of brown butter. So let's create as much as we can in one pan so that we don't create a lot of dishes in our kitchen. So we're going to do a pan roasted chicken leg inside. We'll add the baby carrots. And at the end of it, we're going to have uh, a dish that is kind of a one pot dish, one that can go easily to the plate and uh, we'll garnish it uh, very simply. Okay. All right. So our chicken has boiled, simmered, poached for about 15, 20 minutes. The internal temperature is at 75 degrees Celsius. Let's move on to the next step. I've taken off all of the plastic wrap and taken some kitchen towel and just simply dry the outside of that skin. Now, at this stage, you can do two things. You can either cook it right away, or if you want to get ahead of your preparation and, and maybe you have a large group of friends coming over, you can actually keep this in the plastic wrap, put it back in your fridge until you need it tomorrow. Now, if you want to do that, I'd recommend that you simply put it in a steamer at about 75 degrees and let it steam again for 20 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 75 degrees. But for today's purpose, let's go ahead, uh, start the next step, which is actually searing the chicken to get a nice brown color and add some additional flavor. So chicken's ready to go, it's still quite hot. To a medium heated pan, I'm gonna add quite a substantial piece of butter and we're going to start building some more flavors in this pan. Again, the butter is gonna cook with the carrots, it's gonna cook with our garlics or shallots, a few additional herbs, and we're going to get a nice brown skin on this chicken. So stay with me. Let the butter heat up until it reaches uh, a nice, quick, fizzy kind of bubble uh, look to it. It's just turning just a little bit golden brown is actually a good sign as well that your butter is ready for the next step. We want to make sure we get some ample heat into this frying pan. Now, as the frying pan is heating up, we can add a little bit more salt to the outside of our chicken. A um, touch of pepper. Now, if you have a frying pan where maybe you're doing several pieces of chicken at once and you're a little bit wary of maintaining uh, even coloring on the chicken, I'd recommend do the pepper after you sear it so that you don't burn it. But in this case, I'm working with one piece, very confident that we can 
maintain the, the pepper without burning it. So let's move ahead. Chicken is starting to come to temperature here in the butter. Just waiting for that sizzle to hear the, the sound of the butter coming up. All right, so our bubbles have started to get a little bit fizzier. Uh, the butter's turning a light golden brown. We're gonna add in our chicken. And at this point, take a little care because you might get a little bit of spatter as the moisture from the chicken gets introduced to the butter itself. Okay, kind of rotate your chicken slightly on the base of the pan. You use a pair of tongs if you wish. And just start to get the chicken skin in that hot fat. Now, don't be too concerned about getting a golden, golden brown at this point. Um, we're going to build up the flavor in the pan and start basing some hot fat on it. Now you could do this in the oven as well. You could roast it whole, especially for a turkey leg. I'd recommend that. But do, do take care that you want to make sure you're maintaining a close eye on the internal temperature of your chicken to make sure you reach that 75 degrees. Okay, so just rotating, rotating. We're getting a little bit of fat coming out of the chicken as well, which is a very good thing. We want some of that chicken fat flavor from the skin. Okay. At this point, we're going to add in our baby carrots as well. Then we have the beautiful colors in there. Okay, try to work on the temperature that you're comfortable with. Here I have about a medium high. I'm going to add in that garlic and salad as well. Okay, and we're going to add one more knob of butter just so that we have additional hot fat to start basing our chicken with. This is going to be quite important in the next step because we're going to get all of that flavor from the garlic and shallot perfuming the butter. And it's start to get nice and roasted and that hot fat will then go on top of our chicken. So everything starts to taste intentional, okay? This is a great tip to work at home is try to build flavors in one pan so that everything is kissed by the same aromatics, okay? All that garlic and shallot will also become quite caramelized and can be used later on the finished dish as well. Okay. We have hot fat here. Just start basting the top of that chicken. If you have some hearty herbs like we do here today, you can add in some uh, fresh thyme. You can add in anything that you have. I have a little bit of flowering fennel that I'll add in. Heartier herbs like, uh, let's see, rosemary, thyme would be preferred because they'll stand up to the hot fat. Okay, just keep cooking that out. And you're going to find that the pan roasted flavor is going to come through. Brussels sprouts would be a great addition to this also if you want to change out your carrots or Brussels sprouts. Really try to stay within what's in season. Uh, again, a valentine is a great autumn dish to consider because you could also, instead of steaming and rolling this, you could simply braise it in a little bit of uh, brown sauce or red wine or even in tomato sauce would be quite nice. Work within your means at home and your skill sets, and as you get more confident, start to expand from there. So we're getting nice color now on the chicken skin. All of our vegetables are rendering beautifully. And keep in mind that every time you take the frying pan off of an induction cooker, your heat gets turned off immediately. So try to maintain contact with your induction cooker as much as possible. That said, a little bit of basting will go a long way. Okay, the flavors in here of the garlic and the shallot and just a little bit of caramelized carrot coming through, quite satiable. I love it. All right, so you can see our chicken is starting to beautifully caramelize on the outside. Our carrots and garlic shallots are taking on some aromatic flavors. This is what we want. Now, what I'll do, I'm happy with that color. I've checked the temperature. It's at 75 degrees internal. Place that on the cutting board and allow this to rest. Now, resting is going to do two things. Number one, it'll allow you to touch it so we can cut it. You don't want to burn your fingers. But number two, and most crucially, is it's going to allow all the juices, the natural uh, uh, fats inside that chicken to just mellow out and kind of come together and reabsorb into the meat. So that once we slide it, we don't get juices pouring out into the table. You want to make sure those are reserved for your members and your guests. Now, carrots are set. Let's turn off our heat. From here, we're going to pick a few different herbs from our display, and we're going to go to the plate. So first things first, let's go ahead and plate up those carrots. 
Now again, all of that butter in the pan, you can keep for another use. For today, we're gonna use a little bit as our base sauce, but uh, by no means you have to consume all of that butter. Okay, let's go on. Okay, come now to our chicken. Now carving of the chicken is really up to you. You can serve it whole, absolutely. But what I recommend is start to work on some, some slices so that your guests can see the beautiful work that you've taken on the inside. The, the meat should be beautifully juicy. You should have great texture and color from all of those green aromatics we added, the pistachios, the fresh herbs. So it should work quite beautifully for you. Now, as far as presentation, don't overthink it too much. Again, you can add roast potatoes. You can add a few different uh, herbs or aromatics here. Work with what you have in your kitchen. Try to stay on seasonal ingredients whenever you can. But always, always, always remember your seasoning. From here, I would do a little bit more black pepper, white pepper. Touch more salt on top. Again, you can use a flake sea salt if you want. And I would finish with just a few more of our roasted vegetables. Don't forget that roasted garlic, shallots. These are those flavor bases inside of your pan that you want to make sure your guests enjoy. It's going to have all of that chicken flavor from the fat. Okay. And last but not least, let's work with some of these aromatics that we have. I have some beautiful nasturtium flowers. You can pick these, place them around. This brings a wonderful spring feel to it. Uh, nasturtium has an excellent kind of citrusy feel. It's quite vibrant and fresh. Uh, we grow our own nasturtiums on the sixth floor patio. I have some beautiful barrage leaves as well. These have a little bit of cucumber flavor in the flowers. Again, they're in full bloom, so why not use them? Again, it doesn't take much to kind of impact the natural um, presentation of your dish. So really try your best with what you can find. Uh, grow some herbs on your patio if you have one. On your, uh, on your, even in your, your windowsill will be enough. This nasturtium leaf goes with the flowers, so it makes sense to have on the plate. It has a wonderful kind of citrusy cucumber flavor as well. And last but not least, let's add a little bit of our flowering fennel. These have beautiful seeds that have a real pungent fennel flavor that uh, is quite unexpected for a lot of people who've never had it. A little bit of olive oil on top. And there you have it. This is our chicken ballantine with pistachios and bacon on the inside. We have roasted carrots from our garden. And again, pair this with any vegetable that you can find in the season. My name is Norman Ladardi the chef de cuisine of the Sixth Floor Parade Kitchen. Come join us on the Sixth Floor sometime. Try this great recipe. Thank you.